now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics. Hey! Don't say okay, Dad. Sammy's still doing his thing. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Sammy, for that intro. Ginger! Hi! Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you, John? Oh, just... we're getting there. The house is filling up rapidly. I'm telling you, people are oh. coming in out of the woodworks. They want to see what you're going to paint tonight. Oh, gosh, we're going to have such a good lesson tonight. We're going to do something. Normally, I tell you, never buy phthalo green, but what happens is a lot of times, certainly around Christmas, uh, the art stores, art companies, different art brands, they'll box together paints, and they always put in, they throw in black, and they always throw in phthalo green. So you probably all have some, you know, and then you're <laughs> sitting, and yeah, but Ginger said don't to use it, so what to, what to do, right? And it's not that, it's just it's a very, very strong color, and used by itself, it just, it screams beginner amateur painter. That's what it does, phthalo green. Though it's a pretty color, it's really nice in seascapes. And, you know, I'm not saying throw it out. So tonight we're going to do a lily pond painting, and we're going to use that phthalo green, and I'm going to show you how to tone it down so it's not an in-your-face uh, green, okay? Ooh, we'll also show you how to mix colors that are similar to that. If you have phthalo blue, green shade, and yellow, you can get something pretty close. So if you don't have it, don't sweat it. But, uh, you know, if you do have it, we're going to talk about it. And then the other thing we're going to talk about tonight is... The first time I ever did a, you know, I used to teach painting parties and design, design painting parties. I did that for seven years in Houston, besides my, all my other stuff in galleries and publishers and everything. And one of the first paintings I ever taught was, um, was a very simplified version of a Monet lily pond. And I invited some of my art students who had been taking lessons from me, this was like years ago, uh, to come take the class with me. You know, so at least we'd all make a good showing, right? Because I had never done that, and I wasn't sure I was going to go. And I was shocked that even people who had been painting with me for seven years, you know, for several years, had were just stumped when it came to doing lily pads. They couldn't do them. Not that anything hard about them, but they weren't doing them right. And I'm going, wow, what is this about it? So then, over the time, you know, we've got one really nice lily pad, uh, lily uh, painting on YouTube. But I did that one like what four years ago. One of the first ones I put up. Very nice one with a sky reflecting in the water. And people do like that. It's got a lot of views. It's real nice. But again, when I see people doing that one, one of the things that I see is that um, they have a real hard time with the concept of lily pads. It just befuddles them. We have a wave and water master class where we, um, where we have several lily, uh, two different lily um, uh, pad paintings in the style of Monet because, you know, he had, a, he built a big lily pond. He did hundreds of those pictures. And um, anyway, we had that, and um, what can I say? I mean, I, I, as, as many people as do it right, we get that many that are just struggling. So tonight, we're going to just, I've been thinking about this, and I realize that we just haven't explained this well, because if, once I explain it, it's just going to go, oh my God, that was so simple. Why didn't I see that before? And that's just kind of how puzzles are. Once you unlock a puzzle, um, you can't not, it can't be unlocked, you know I mean? The the horse has left the barn, right? No sense in closing the door. You're going to get it tonight, and I'm going to explain it. So that's cut some of the things we're going to do, and we're doing this on a 6x8 canvas because we want to get through the painting for the evening. Um, could you make this larger? Sure. But for now, this is what we're doing. We do a lot of that on our website, 6 by 8s Not everybody has hours to paint every week, but they want to learn. So probably about um, a third of our lessons, wouldn't you say about 30% of our lessons, John, are 8 by 10 or smaller oh, on absolutely. our website. Yes. And we do that because, A, people want to learn to paint. They, don't, they can't just be hanging zillions of paintings all over the room at their house. They don't have room for them. And it costs a lot of money to paint. Uh, so let's, let's be honest. It's not, it's not a free hobby. And so when you do something small, you can learn the technique. Then if something really grabs you, oh, man, I need to have this painting over the couch or in my living room or someplace, then make it bigger. So that being said... Let's, let's um, come on down and welcome. I want to thank our moderators for coming. I have kind of a surprise announcement for some of our um, um, Scholarship Academy members no, tonight. No, no, not yet. Not yet. We're going no. we're, we're we're to wait because nobody's well, out here except Kim Sim. Well, we're going to. Well, I'm not going to announce it tonight. <laughs> I'm just saying tonight we're going to announce it. We're also going to be doing a 
uh, giveaway painting again tonight. John mailed off six of those today to the recipients from last week. So we, I'd show them to you, but they're gone. We're, um, we're going to be giving another painting away and drawing for our live audience. And I apologize for you guys that are watching this later. We kind of like to reward the people that hang in there with us live. And one of the things we can do is just have this fun contest. We'll give you the rules and how to enter. You must be present to win, okay? But uh, we'll give away a small little original 10-minute painting that I'm going to do tonight sometime, okay? So, sometime in the near future. Something in the near future. So hang in with me. Follow along. You're going to love this. This is probably one of the more important videos that I've done. I, I'll say that in the beginning because I'm going to really demystify lily pads, okay? So here, if you'll scoot down, John, to my painting. I am there. I uh, am you're there. there. You see how we've got these lily pads and we've got these trees and everything's in green tones. There's really no brown in this picture. You guys see that? And we've got this agapanthus. Those are those kind of tall purpley flowers that come. You guys know what those What's are? What's that word? Agapanthus. Agapanthus? Uh-huh. They're called agapanthus That's and they're cool sort of name. these purpley flowers. If I think that flower, bloom, they, they, those could be, um, well, there's a lot of different kinds, but that's, that's kind of what I had in mind when I put those in there. And we've got a few little water lilies in front, okay? Now, let's just take a minute. We're going to look at some water lily photographs. Not that I didn't use these for reference. I found these later tonight. And I want to show you something. Here's a water lily photograph. Here's one. And here's water lilies on a pond. Now, what I want to show you is that one of the things you have to understand in a landscape is here's a rule. The farther things are away, they, they're hard to see. They're smaller. You know that when you're trying to read road signs in a car. You know, someone will say, what does that sign say? And I mean, Cinnamon's dad used to just pull this on me. He'd go, <laughs> what does that sign say? I'm going, what sign? What's, and I had 20-20 vision. What sign? He had this sort of eagle eye vision. I can't believe you can't read that sign. I can't see the sign. What are you talking about? You know, but you guys know that that's a, you haven't thought about it, but that's a rule. Things get farther away. So, when you look at this picture here, John, zoom in on this for me, would you? Really oh. cramp in on this for me. Do you see how small these li water lilies are back here, opposed to the ones in front? Doesn't that make sense? Now we're looking at this, we're not looking straight down. We're looking at this kind of from the side. And so while it's true that a water lily is basically kind of a round thing with a little pie-shaped cut out of it, you know, that's what they look like, kind of, kind of round, but that's true. Um, when they're on, when they're like this, what we call foreshortened, they're elliptical. Now this, we get back to, now I want you to see this, see? I want you to see the shape of this. You see this? See the shape? I'll draw a box around it. Let me draw a box around these. Can you see this? Elliptical. Elliptical. Okay? Um, ovals. The same thing we talked about, ovals. Okay? So now they're not, everybody wants to draw them like this. Like little Pac-Man sitting up like this. And you can't, obviously they can't be that way. So if you put those on your, and then they, the other favorite trick as I see is that people go, I've got this water lily here, and I'm going to do a nice big one back here, and I'm going to do another <laughs> big one here. Well, listen, that just can't be. It's either, if this one's big, then this is really little back here. See what I mean? All right, so that's, that's really, if you can get this concept down, this is huge. Now, let me show it to you again. I like this picture, by the way. Isn't that kind of nice? Um, again, these are a little more oval. We're a little more straight down and less sideways. So these are a little rounder. See that? These are slightly rounder in front with their little... But now look, sometimes the, the little cut goes this way, sometimes it goes that way. But now as we get farther away, the, the front ones are a little rounder. Now we're starting to get elliptical. See that? The front ones were a little rounder and smaller. Look at that. And the other thing is that these little suckers, they group. They cluster like schools of fish. In fact, if you, you know, I had a hard time finding, a little, you know, pictures of ponds that just weren't solid lily pads, you know, because then, you know, then they pretty much carpet the whole pond at some point. It's not as interesting, you know, for, as an artist. But all right, you see that? And a lot of times their flowers are sticking up on a long stem, and some of them have flowers that are sticking up, you know, that are just sitting on the pad. It depends. There's lots of different kinds, all right? So here's my last one. And you see, here's the flowers that are sitting up here on the, and sort of a little cup here. See, the little cup shape. But I want you to see, I'm going to just trace around these. See, see the elliptical shape? Now look at this one. This one is still elliptical, but we did this cut right toward us like that. But it's still elliptical. This one, look at the cut here, 
And if this is two, there's one here and there's another one. They kind of overlap. So um, if you, and then way back here, look how skinny they got. Way back here, these things got real skinny. Do you see what happened? So, all right. This is real important. So I think everybody got, did everybody get that, John? You think everybody got Absolutely. that? Absolutely. They're all jumping up and down and they, they are making their lilies. With they under, you understand. All right. Yeah. So now we started off, I mean, it, because that seems to be the biggest stumbling block why everybody's painting looks weird because they do these Pac-Man things and go, <laughs> I don't know what happened to this painting. I don't usually have trouble with stuff. No, it's just, it's a shape thing, right? All right. So now you see, we started off with this picture. We have a dark brown back, kind of dark blue green background. Okay. And one of the things we're going to do is, um, let's see, I think I have a ruler here. I'm going to measure this, and I'm going to come down about, um, let's find a ruler where I can see it, put glasses on, about four inches, okay? About four inches from the top of my six by eight. What is this from the bottom? It's about, um, well, it's four inches, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, I, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> Six by eight, you come down four. What's on the other end? Mm, well, I well, don't know. Well, sometimes if I measure both, because sometimes I always see the ruler right. So it's, I got to see. That's my excuse. I got to see, make sure it's the same, right? So it, I've got, and you know, the, the glasses are on top of your head would really help you if you put them in front of your eyes. All right. So this is all going to be pond. This is all going to be. And then up here, kind of like this, is all going to be grassy stuff, right? All right. We're good? Yeah. So let's put stuff. some paint out while we're talking and remind everybody that uh, this is our phthalo green. We're going to be using, we'll try that a little differently tonight. We're using acrylic paints. Um, someone always says, why don't you put out your materials list? Because I use the same stuff all the time. If I'm going to do something different, I'll tell you. But mostly it's the same stuff every time. We use the same colors. Um, and also there's a consistency of that too. Here's phthalo blue. Hey, we'd like to thank Miss Nelson for the donation. Oh, by gosh. Ginger and John. Thank you very much. Listen, we can't tell you how much we appreciate that very much. We got some nice donations in the other day, and that really helped us set the cost of mailing out all these, you know, freebie things that we did. So we appreciate that very much. Um, also, a lot of your donations help us scholarship people that, um, you know, are under really um, extraordinary circumstances that maybe a painting is, you know, sometimes, the, you know, their only therapy, something that people can do. So we scholarship probably every month several pe people, wouldn't you say, John? Oh, and yeah. your donations help us do that. We um, also, it helps us uh, keep in paint and supplies and all those things. So thank you. And also, um, it, it's when you're watching a live show, it's possible to do that, all right? But when you're... Um, uh, Watching, watching it out already recorded, there really is no way to donate. But you can always go to our website at gingercooklive.gallery. And how did they do that, John? I forget. Uh, gingercooklive.gallery slash donation. Well, there you go. We made it real simple. Um, That'll that's take something. you right to it. You know, and we appreciate that. It's a very, very nice thing. We don't do Patreon or any of that stuff. We do have an online art academy. And um, we have people that... Um, you know, can, you can sign up. Somebody asked me the other day, this was so funny. We had a lady from Israel write, and she goes, well, I, your time zone is like seven hours different from me, and if I signed up for a week from your academy, I, would I have to watch your pictures during in the middle of the night or something? I'm going, no. <laughs> Every, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to understand the question. Everything, everything, okay, everything yeah. is um, downloaded. It's, I mean, not downloaded, but it's pre-recorded on our website, over 300 lessons. And we had one lady do about 27 one time, um, 27 lessons. Yeah, she just stayed up the entire time and watched as many as she could during her seven-day seven membership. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, why not just, I mean, it was, it's 10 bucks, you guys. Give me a break. It's not even the cost of a tube of paint. You know, I would like to thank uh, Anne Marie and also Susan for their donations. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it very, very much. Let's see, I had some Dazzling Purple out. I could have sworn. Ah, oh, here it is. Look at that. You saw me, right? I had it talking to you, and I forgot. So anyway, that was sort of funny. But yes, no, you can. We do the week for nine ninety five, and we we did that because we realized not everybody has the time to devote all the time to lessons. But if you figure out the cost of our lessons divided by the lessons uh, that we do, and we've done research on this, and it's phenomenal the deal that we are offering. I mean, so great. And the more lessons, it gets better every month too. That's what's so funny. It, it, it gets better every me. month, right? It, it's 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 um even if you only logged on once a month you're still money ahead you're still money ahead you know just still money ahead which is and of course if you're if you have membership 
you know, which is starting out membership. We also offer senior and military discounts and, uh, and special pricing for our friends in Australia and Canada and so forth, um, where the dollar has been um, not kind. kind. How about that? <laughs> That's I don't know. Nice you know, anyway, you know, and you go through it, and we redid our whole sign up page. John spent a week on it. How many pages did you have to do on the website to make this work? Um, how much page? How many pages 40, of code? 46 or so. 46 pages of code to redo the pricing structure. Imagine. And make oh. the sign up speed better. And make the sign up speed better. So our website is always getting better. We're always trying to improve. Mm. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And before, so did you see the paint I have yellow oxide? Cat Jello Medium, that wasn't that, by the way. That was some other weird jello. Looks what like light. That's Cat Jello Light or something. What happened to the Cat Jello Medium? And you're going, I give up ginger. What happened to it? I had it out. Oh, here's some. Here's some. Here's some of that Liquitex stuff. Here. There, look at the difference. You see it? See the difference between that and that? I do. Okay. All right. So now, um, let's move this out of the way. Incidentally, if you didn't do yesterday's painting, we had a blast yesterday. We had 500 people on our live show. Look at this. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And this is so simple to do. We broke this down. This is the funnest lesson. I saw a bunch of you who joined our, um, our Facebook club and the ones who were already members. And you should you know, give a shout out to you guys that, sh that showed up with these paintings this morning. Oh, you might mention a little bit more about that. The Facebook page. The way you explained it better than I did. Well, yeah, we have a Facebook we have a Facebook uh, club that we we started this year, and we only have it because we have six, six, right? Six. Six moderators, right? Yes. We have six <laughs> moderators. Yeah, last so, time you cut somebody off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have six <laughs> moderators who volunteer their time to make this the nicest place on Facebook for acrylic artists to show their artwork. Uh, nobody says anything mean. You can put capital CC and get help from all kinds of very talented artists who are happy to help you. You'll get lots of encouragement on your artwork. Occasionally, I swing by and make comments and even offer suggestions that can happen. You know, if somebody says, oh, I don't know what to do this. Just today, somebody from, you know, across the pond, you know, was, um, that means the Atlantic Ocean, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's an old-fashioned term. Yeah. At some pond, right? Anyway, um, they were doing some winter scene. Had one tiny thing that threw the whole painting off, and I quick took a took a picture, copied that picture, took it into my computer, you know, did the corrections, posted it back, and she goes, "Oh my gosh, that's exactly right. Thank you so much." You never know. But there's a caveat to our Facebook club. We just don't let anybody in. You know, if you're an oil painter, that's we love you, but go somewhere else. You know, we're just only <laughs> doing acrylics, right? Yep. And um, also. Uh, we, we pretty much feature the artwork you're either learning in my art academy or on our website. We have you know, a good hundred, couple hundred lessons here on YouTube or your own original stuff, right? So if, it's, if you're doing work with another lovely acrylic artist, there's lots of them on YouTube, that's fine. We just don't post them on our page. And the other thing is, but the page is about you guys. And, and Judy uh, Guitar, who's one of our moderators, is always telling you about deals. We're going to paint this as I talk. I'm using a small angle brush, 3 8 inch. And I'm going to do the background first. I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and phthalo green and a tiny bit of purple, make that dark. And I'm going to come in here like that and just repaint this, just wet this part right here real quick. That was purple, ultramarine blue, and old phthalo green. While you're doing that, I'd like to thank uh, Michelle and Terry for their donations. Oh, gosh, thanks so much, you guys. This was really kind. We really, really appreciate it. So anyway, see, so I'm just doing this little top part right here, kind of uneven. Then I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo green and yellow. Do you see that? See, it's that kind of light. Maybe a little yellow oxide, okay? And I'm going to just come up here, barely touch it now, in here like this. Just touch it into here and suggest something's growing back here without saying anything. Maybe a little more of that into this wet color. I don't want it too bright. I'm just, it's, the purple will tone this green back, okay? So that we're just suggesting something's growing back there, okay? That's our far background. Not to get too crazy on you, but that's, what, that's where we're doing it. Okay, so anyway, I started telling you about our club. So then we realized that at, as more and more people were posting, when every, every post is approved, okay? Every post is approved before it goes on there. Um, so it goes through an approval it process. It goes through an approval process, right, by our volunteers. 
and everybody takes time to comment on people's stuff. We have some really lovely artists that are members, and, that, and, and they, everybody tries really hard to say encouraging things to you guys. This is really the place to be. And we decided we were going to limit it to 4,000 members because um, while not everybody posts every day, if we get more than that, we don't think you'll have the same experience. So it's, uh, and right now we're about halfway there, would you say so? Yeah, we're a little bit over half. We're, we're a little over halfway there. And then after that, we will then close it and only have it open <coughs> for new members to members who <coughs> excuse me, are on our online academy, academy members. When you become a member of the online academy of Ginger Cook Acrylic Art, you will um, is one of the benefits. Uh, you know, one of have. the benefits is you'll get the benefit to the club. And if you you know if you if you're not a, a member, then you won't have it. You know, you'll, you'll be, lose the membership. You'll be, yeah, you'll you'll lose the membership of both. Okay. All right. So now you saw this is what we've got so far. Are you with me? So, so far, now, I'm with you. So all right. So now I know that that down in here. I'm going to have lily pads, but I want to get some background here. So one of the things that has to happen is I'm going to take a little bit of white and add it to that color and a little bit of yellow oxide. See that? Okay. Just a sort of soft green color. And I want to come up about, um, I don't know, this is about, what, two fingers over, two, three. Put a dot there and put a dot about halfway down and draw a little curved line about like that. And I'm going to just use this light green color. You say, here's a tree, like that. So you don't have to go down very far. And then maybe we'll have, um, let's see, I think I've got that one. Could have, could have leaned it a little more this way. I think I'm going to, well, all right. I'm going to say I've got another one here next to it, almost like a, the letter V, like there. There's a tree right there, okay? Put those two trees in. And, and this is still wet, so you can see it's all sort of blending in here, okay? Now I'm going to rinse the brush. And then whenever you do that, you know, squeeze it out on your towel. You know, not a lot of people use paper towels. Um, terry cloth rags are the things to use. They really take the water out. You can use them over and over again. They're really, terry cloth towels are the things. Old, old towels, you know, it's a good excuse to go out and buy some new towels if you use your old towels up, right? Now let's turn it sideways and take a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow oxide, make this sort of light color. All right, now what you want to do is tap off the excess paint on, on your paper. Now come along here like this, and this is still wet, so I'm going to use that paint as off the paper. I'm going to just using my angle brush, I'm going to pull some light here, like that, on the edge. I'm going to just try that again. I'm going to tap it right here on the edge, and I'll do that on this one too. Let's say the light's coming from that what direction. Okay. Okay, and now that's not showing up enough, so let's make it, let's lighten it up one more time. Going to come over here like this, a little bit lighter now, barely touch it. Just tap this in on the edge, and pull it toward me and lift. Pull it toward me and lift. Okay, we'd like to thank Abigail and Tina for making the donation through the PayPal link. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice. We really appreciate it. All right, so that, that's a start on these, all right? We're saying that's a start on that, okay? I'm so, liking that so far. So now what we've got is, um, now we're going to put some, uh, well, we've got some foliage to go in here. and then we, But we could probably do a little more with these trees, but not this red hot second. How's that? So as long as we're into this green mixture, and here's the point where you have a little tiny bit of, like a little water thing like this. Here's one. That's, uh, oh, like you, a little you? mister. I'm just going to mist this little puddle here, right here. I'm just going to mist this color up again. little phthalo green, a little yellow little tiny bit of cad red medium, tone it down, okay? So, so you, you're using the complement to tone it down? Yeah, the, yeah, complement is, is red, it's green, so we're using a t like 1%, right? Okay, now, I want to come up here like this and suggest some sort of little, um, little plant growing up here, some sort of little weed, okay? And maybe one over here, two little dots, and just um, using just the corner of my brush to just suggest some little thing growing here. Then maybe back over here you've got something. I don't know. We've got miscellaneous we weeds that are a little bit brighter growing in the background like that, okay? Uh, Jerry's and, asking a question. Do you wash your towels? And if you do wash your towels, you have to run a cycle afterwards to wash the washing machine. No. It, it, no. I'm the, if I wash my towels, the paint's dry. And yeah. um, I've kind of quit doing that. We've, but you can wash them. But, uh, you know, you can use them really so long. I mean, um, mm. 
I'm telling you, you can, I mean, you can really just keep using them, see? And over both sides. Just, okay. So now we're going to sit there and say, let's take a little bit of yellow oxide and add to that, right? Just a little bit more. Now we're changing the color. Tap off the extra. And let's, let's just tap some yellow oxide just with the flat of the brush down like that. Maybe well, up here. Notice how many different greens she's getting. And then up here, maybe we'll do a couple of long things like that, just with the angle like that, okay? And then how about something like this? Let's just tap in just different plant here with a little bit of the yellow oxide in that same color. Just change it, right? something like that, okay? And um, then let's uh, I want to brighten this up a little bit. Okay, so all right, see what we've done? So far, so good. Everybody's going, yeah, that's cool. Now let's take a little bit of the thalo green and a little tiny bit of the red and a little bit of the thalo blue. Becky okay. just made a donation and she says, can you give two people a free week's membership? Thanks I can do much. that. You can do that? You can oh, do I'd like to see you do that. You can do that. Are you just being obnoxious tonight? No, What's I'd your like deal? to see you do that. I, I'll put you in the command chair over here. Uh, Absolutely. And John, I'll sit over there. What do you think? You think John, the fans I think will like you're that? being weird. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Now, you see here, I've got a few little dark spots on this um, uh, little tree here. Just a few little dark spots here. And um, want a little bit more yellow oxide with that. I want a little bit more green here on this tree. Get some yellow oxide here. Let's, let's grab some here like this on this tree. All right, so there you go. So a little bit on that tree. I think I need a little bit of white in that. I want a little bit lighter green. I still want it darker, but there. there go. The trick is it's got to be lighter than the background but darker than the, si the right side. Does that make sense? So I want to make sure that this tree shows up. There you go. All right, so those are two trees. Now, here's the shape of the leaf that we're going to be painting, okay? So what we're going to be doing, can you see me here? We're going to be doing this, like a heart. Here's a heart, right? So we're doing these kind of heart leaves that are going to the side like that, something like that. So now we're going to take the phthalo green and white. Now see how bright that is, right? And we'll put a tiny bit of purple in it, tone that down, okay? Maybe a little bit of yellow oxide. How about some yellow? Let's try that. Let's make it a little bit yellow in there. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so let's come on up here, and we're just going to put the, some leaves in here like that in front of our, using just the angle brush to kind of suggest that shape of a leaf, right? Okay. Let's come up in front of this. I'm going to get a little white on here to make this one a little lighter. Okay, and I'm going to say I've got some of these leaves growing here. Now, as long as I'm happily into this, using my angle brush, I'm going to start doing that same color and do some long grasses. Say so same greens. This is pretty. I mean, you get all these greens and you start playing some can go to the tree. Maybe we'll add a little more yellow to that. I'm going to add a little, few little brighter ones. Let's, say, let's just try yellow on the brush, see what happens. Yeah, there you go, some little brighter yellow ones in the front. Now, okay, so far so good, yeah? All right, so that's what we've got here, and maybe we'll put some little yellow things coming up over here, too. I like that, some little yellow dotty things. All right, so that's my background. Now I'm going to rinse my brush, start again. Now, new color, come over here with yellow oxide little tiny bit of cad red medium. All right, a little tiny bit of white. I got a strange question for you. Yeah, and I'm going to come along here and do my bank. I just wanted people to see this. So a bank is kind of coming this way, and then we're going to kind of um, bring the bank back this way. So it's not just one straight line, okay? Yeah, what's the question? Can you wash canvas, and what do you put over the paint if you make it into curtains? Um, well, canvas <laughs> is cotton, sailcloth. That's what they make um, uh, s sailboats out of. Old sails. Old sailboats. I mean, sailboat sails. I mean, they've been doing that for a thousand years. We talked about this yesterday. It depends on the thread count. And it's probably a terrible idea, but, um, and, but if you wanted to... Um, you, you know, you wouldn't have to put anything on them. You know, the acrylic paint would be fine. 
I mean, you could, I, I guess it depends on what you were painting. Um, it depends on how thick the, the thread count is. You know, you know what I'm saying? It depends. It's how thick that, you know, there's like sheets that are real thin and sheets that are thick and canvas that's heavy and canvas that's not so heavy. Um, you know, my mother used to make burlap curtains. I mean, anything will make a curtain and the paint shouldn't change it too much. Um, you can buy canvas by the roll, but I'd get the real thin stuff. So, if, yeah, give a little bit. Yeah, I mean, here's that. Just so putting stiff. a few little gold flowers on here. Okay, so now here's that. Now, we're going to come right down into here, right? We've kind of left this. You're going, wow, how cool is this, right? Really worked out, didn't it? Now, let's just take, let's come up here and draw some water lilies. These are going to be rounder because they're in front, right? And remember, they all kind of overlap and touch, right? We've got one here, maybe. Got, I've got one here. Um, and I've got a smaller one this way, maybe facing that way. I've got kind of a big one here in the corner. Where's my pencil sharpener? This has really gone dull on me. This is a neat little pencil sharpener, one of our viewers from England. It's made by Conti, but I've never seen them sold in the United States. You like that? That's kind of a mess here. All right. Uh, here's Sharp. a question. Why does Ginger always, from my point of view, always use angle brushes? Uh, because they're the easiest brushes on the world to use. I love them. Anything on the world. They're really, they, are, they just are, I mean, uh, they're so easy to use once you've used an angle brush. In fact, I'm so excited about angle brushes that this year, for this week, uh, for our members, last, you know, this last week for our members, our members get new videos every month, all right? And, and we, because we have so many levels of people in our art academy, we have people who've never painted before, so we have a lot of what I call back to basics, and I encourage everybody to do those because there are painting tips and tricks that I do that no one else does, and you've got to get the, it, it'll just save you hours if you understand these brush strokes. And we did another back to basic lesson this week, and it was how to use an angle brush to do trees, like that, and how to do it to, you know, to blend, to blend, okay? is a sphere and how to blend and that's on our website now it's a really really strong lesson and uh on, on how to use an angle brush because um they work a little differently but they're really nice once you get the hang of it all right so and they happen to be um i know that there are certain uh, you know a couple of brands sell them but the ruby satin silvers in my opinion are the best ones short handled um okay they, they come short handled all right, so remember, like back here, they're going to be kind of small, right? They're going to be ovally. Remember, we talked about that. Maybe there's going to be one here like that, and they're going to get smaller, something off of here like that. And then I'm going to say I've got a tree that's starting about um, two inches up from the bottom right here, it's starting right there. And it's coming, and it's ending up, um, coincidentally, two and a th two, three, let's see, what is this? Hmm. Well, this is one and three quarters over here. It's going to end up there. Never hurts to put a few dots when you're drawing something like that. Put the start and the bottom on that. So here's my tree coming up like that. Okay. So now that we've established all that, um, let's take some. Here, where's our angle brush? See, this would be your other ex thing you could use is a little bright brush that are short. Um, where did I put that angle one here? Okay. So now what we're going to do is lily pads are, um, what you need to know about them is that they, they're lots of colors. So I'm just going to pick any old color green and just paint some in right now. I don't even care what it is. Just pick a green, paint them in, okay? This is all we're going to do is just get them started, right? I would like to know if I wanted to paint this on a mannequin, how would I prep the surface? On a what? On a mannequin. Uh, is a mannequin like... Um, like a mannequin, you know, either plastic or what we really made them nowadays. Well, I think you just paint. I don't think you, you know, if the paint, you know, test it and the paint sticks, then just paint on it. I don't think you'd have to do anything. Um, years ago, Cinnamon, we bought Cinnamon's Daughter Honey, this coolest dollhouse. They don't make them anymore. It was, um, it was a Disney castle. It was a, like a playhouse. And had all these turrets. And we, and we painted... Um, we, and I needed to paint. It was like that step two um, plastic, you know, like mailbox plastic, and paint doesn't stick to it. And Home Depot sold this spray, and we sprayed the whole castle with it, so it let the stuff stick. 
It was for glass or plastic, you know, like plastic mailboxes. Because if you, you've seen those plastic mailboxes, acrylic paint won't stick to them, but they have the spray you can spray on there and then it will. <coughs> so I'd probably do that. Yeah, it really depends on the surface that you're painting. Yeah, you just can't really make a blanket statement here. All right, we got one some here. Maybe we got a couple coming out this way. All right, like that, kind of touching. All right, so far so good. See, like little stepping stones. Two, 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 two. All right, now I'm going to put some white in here and wet my brush. And come back over here and kind of warm this up, put a little yellow oxide with it, this whole little green area here. Maybe a little cad red medium, a little yellow oxide. Yeah, that's a good color. Now let's just come in here like this and paint this tree in. We'll just get that tree started. Don't you love acrylic paint? Paints right over everything. You don't have to, you know, you can just decide. There's my tree. Okay, I'm going to say there it is. And that can be just happily sitting there. You like that? Happily sitting there. So if you have not subscribed to our Ginger Cook Live channel, we encourage you to do so. We appreciate it very much. Um, when you save our videos in your playlist, um, YouTube is more likely to show them up to other people. Um, your likes and comments are always appreciated. And when you comment on a live show, I don't even, I, I never see them. Um, if you want me to see them, you have to comment after it's, you know, over and posted. And, posted and then I, then they'll stay up and I, I, I will go back and answer those. But, um, but basically, um, okay, so, all right, you know, we appreciate the fact that when you subscribe and there's, and if you want to be notified of our little, of our live shows, there's a bell underneath the subscribe button. And if you click on that, that tells YouTube to notify you when we're going live. But it's generally now, our live thing is now Mondays at 7.30 and Sundays at 2.30. That's when we decided to do it. P.M. Central. Uh, P.M. Central time, yeah. In the afternoon. All right, so now I'm coming over here on top of these. Do you see that? Just kind of using the flat of my brush. Um, just, this is layer two. Okay, on these uh, water lilies, it's, and it's not a lot of paint. Some of you use way too much paint. Um, it's better to layer. Let's see. Let's get a let's get a water lily here at the base of this too, there of our tree, and um, maybe just put something back here now that I'm playing. Okay, so. All right, so there we go. So we've got our got our water lilies. And you were thinking this was going to be a really hard painting. Weren't you guys thinking this was hard? Oh, here's a great question. Yeah? John, will there be a monthly newsletter? We <coughs> have very high hopes. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. We just missed December, didn't we? No, we missed November, too. We missed. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll get one. Happy New Year. No, we're going to get one. This is a new year, and our intent is to go for the middle of the month so we know a little bit of what's going on in the month and how the month's going to end. So we're going to shoot for next week to have <laughs> our first newsletter out of the 2018 season and see if we can do them on time, around the 15th. I don't know what day the 15th is. Do you know? What's the day? The 8th? So it'll be a week from today. Well, that's, that's a good goal. I always like to have goals. Don't you guys like to, to have, have goals? goals. Absolutely. Great to have goals. Now, see how this p painting is? You would go right along the edge and pull the, pull the brush towards you and just keep going. Ginger, we only have 555 people watching at this time. Really? Gosh, you guys, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. This is so awesome. So the reason I like these angles is you have the sharpest edge. Are you close in on this? I, I can Look, get closer. Get, get close. Depends this, on how much you're going to move around on I'm it. I'm going to stay right in this tree. I want you to see you pinch this and pull it, and you get this knife blade edge, right? So that you can get something like that. Look uh, at that. See, I pull in and you do the wrong area. All right, let me do it right here. <laughs> see, right here like this. See? Well, look at that. Look at that. You and can get the finest edge on here. You can go from there. And then you can just take to right here. I'm just a little bit lighter here. See what I'm doing? And do pull that. It, uh, and go a little bit brush. lighter from the same brush. Pull it. Just touch it and pull. So it's like, it's like having a liner brush and a bright brush at the same time. Yeah, that's exactly right, John. That's a great example of, of what I'm talking about. Let's get a little yellow oxide, a little white. So you can I'm only afford one brush. And we determined yesterday that the brush is more important than the paint. If, you, if you're on a budget, get the tool. Yeah. Get your hammer, in this case, which is the brush. You know, and, and it's funny. Now I'm going to turn that around. But see how that sort of just... 
did that. Now I want to take, I want to get, get kind of a moss green color. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue and yellow and make a moss green color. And I want to come this way with it. See, it's a little bit browner on this side. See what I'm doing? Pulling the, let's make this a little bit bluer. Pulling this, um, pulling the dark part of the tree this side. That's my shadow side. And I'll put a few little, this is kind of like a birch tree. There you go, see? And then just pull this this way. Okay, so now you've got this really nice sort of uh, shadowy color. Now that's not the only color, but that's a nice color. So where else could we put this? Could we add a little of this color back here? No, let's lighten up something. So let's lighten up. Let's um, got a little bit of light. Let's lighten up a lily pad a little bit, maybe here, maybe on this side. Lily pads are fun. Would you just keep playing with your greens is what I want you to do. Play with your greens when you're doing this. And, and some part of it's going to be one color. Now, Maybe. how many greens have you purchased down there? Well, the only green we've been playing with, the stalo green, well, and then the all these other, getting uh, we're getting, you're getting all these things. If you put yellows and purples and, and um, you know, different, um, look at that beautiful green right there, see? You That's can, close to you, the you can get all these wonderful colors, and your, your, your lily pad will look much uh, more interesting. Let's put it that way. How about a little bit? How about, you know, sometimes they're, um, here, let's do a little orange. Sometimes they're, you know, that they, they turn brown or whatever. There's a little bit of a brown situation that happens with them. Sometimes they, they get old, I guess. You know, so you might say, I want that a little yellower. Okay, like that. Let's come back up here and say maybe one edge of it is kind of had, had, had a day, right? Maybe this one's all this color. This painting is your own design? Yeah, this is my own design. <clears throat> this is my own design. And um, somebody said, how long did it take you to you know, paint this? Uh, well, you know, when I'm first working out designs, they take me a little while. I fooled around with it. But, you know, once I know where I'm going, then it's a matter of just, um, you know, layering the colors. Okay? Julie, we'd like to know if you could put a funky frog in the picture. Well, you know, it's funny. John wanted a funky frog. Are you sure you didn't make that up, <laughs> no, John? No, no, that's you a real sure one. That there's I can a real copy person? and paste that one to you. That wasn't me. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is that then the frog becomes the center of interest. It seems like a great idea at the front. And in fact, I actually, if you do frogs on lily pads on Google search, you'll see some great ones, really great ones. There's lily pads with frogs. I found about 20 pictures. I'm thinking if you did this painting a lot bigger. You could do it bigger, and then you might might be all right. I mean, this is only a, this is a baby six by eight. He yeah, just this looks is like a little green speck down there. Yeah, exactly. This is pretty. Let's make a little brighter green now. Let's brighten one up here. Here we go. Let's just now we've gone into a little bit brighter green. We're in the front. See, we're gonna just brighten up some of these. And you'll notice I'm not being all that um, careful where we're where we're defining it. Where we're defining it really is the um, the colors. The colors are kind of suggesting our lily pad more than the shape, though the shape is there. Gosh, I've already got paint on me. Look at that. Oh, that's such a surprise. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know. see how that's even possible. Well, I don't care. It's just way it is. All right, so now I want to just, I want to come in here. I'm going to wet the brush because my, what's happening is the brush is drying out too. So let's, let's start with some more greens here. There's a bright phthalo green. Now let's put some yellow now, oxide with it. when you it off, you squeezed it out. Always squeeze it out. Now I want to come back up here. And I want to say that I've got, um, I want a few little long things like that, <laughs> long ones, like that, little long ones. And then I want, I want to pull some, a little more yellow oxide, I want to pull some this way. See, kind of toward me, starting off there, kind of into the water, and maybe some coming out of the water like this. There, there you go. And make that a little bit lighter. If I put something light right next to that tree, then that tree will show up. See? Want that little bit of tree. Now, I'm going to pinch the brush, just kind of do something like this in the water with a little bit of a green reflection. Not too much, just something like that. And um, just to get something going. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? Here, let's, let's lighten this one up a bit. Then as long as I'm light, you know, acrylics dry darker, so I'm going to come back here and lighten up some of these in the back a little bit, a little bit of light. 
some of those, and let's see, what do we got? We, I think we need at least a couple of something smaller like that over there. There, okay. Kind of, you know, bring the plants around. While we're doing that, and I know this is pretty, I mean, this is really, honestly, very, very simple. I want to take some yellow and red and make like an orange color here on the side here. Karen would color. like to know. And then I want some white with it. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Karen would like to know what? Ginger, <laughs> I only know men that were masters from the 1800. Were there women allowed to paint? Yeah, there were women. There were women. America Sat was one. See, I'm going to bring in a little of this peach color in this um, um, tree now. There were. There was a couple of them. In fact, what was the one we just did that I was so knocked back by? That woman. She was, just, she, she, was, she was married to the brother of one of the big guys. Yeah. And she hung out with all of them at the time of the Impressionists. And she did a lot of paintings of women and children and stuff like that. But this gal... I'm trying well, to think of her name. Her stuff. She was she was more successful. She made more money than a lot of them. I mean, not yeah. Monet and those guys, but she was she was selling out. You know, she, it's just that um, you women just um, gotten a bad rap in the art world. You know, like what can I tell you? They, in my opinion, they've got. Uh, you know, somebody always says, "Why do you sign your name Cook, not Ginger Cook?" Well, because generally speaking, there is this feeling. That uh, the paintings by um, by men are somewhat better than the paintings by women, uh, you know. And certainly, you know. Of course, I'm a lot older than a lot of you people that are watching this, but this was what it was like, you know. Um, Back in there was, the day. A, you know. So if people fell in love with the painting, then they were willing to go. Oh, lady painted it, okay. But you, you know, they were just. It just was better to let them like the painting first, you know. I so said just. Um, yeah, I just didn't talk about gender. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that was just my idea, perceived thing. I'm going to make some lighter green here. Um, lighten up some of these. Uh, but anyway, that was the feeling. I'm, I'm dry brushing on color, by the way, while we're chatting. While we're having this lovely chat about how I think women have been disenfranchised in the art world. <laughs> but I do. I do. I think they definitely were, right? I definitely think they were. All right, so we're gonna let's let's put a let's come on down here like this. Does Ginger ever sand her canvas sheets? Uh, I haven't really had to sand them, but you could. I haven't really I've done had it to a sand couple them. Couple of them came out a little rough, so I sanded them before I did the background. Yeah, sometimes so. you can. I mean, it doesn't hurt to sand anything. So I'm just talking about this little um, reflection here in this tree. You notice how they're going at the at, at a jack they jackknife. They don't go straight down. If it, if something's at an angle like this, um, like for instance, if you okay, here's your water. Guys, okay, see this? Here's your water. Okay, and you've got a tree going like this. Instead of the reflection going this way, it jackknifes and goes this way. Okay, if it's straight up and down, it goes straight up and down. Okay. Oh, is it jack? Do we still have that painting of the? Um, of the bridge. Can you grab that for me, John? I want to show people that. It's one of the, our website ones. I've noticed that a lot of times people have trouble understanding the direction of reflections. Which right? bridge are you speaking the of? The one with the Virginia Park. Do you have that one? Oh, probably. I think that's in the hall. I'm going to lighten this up right here. And while I'm okay. gone, how good is Ginger at drawing? Just good old pencil drawing on paper. Excellent. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask that. I'm really good at that, you know. Um, but um, but the but but the thing is, when you're painting, you don't want to be drawing. The thing is, if you learn to draw, then you try to draw while you're painting. And when you're painting, someone asked me today on our website said, "How do you stay loose? And um, how do you keep so loose? And how do you keep loose? We're gonna thin this tree up a little bit right here. Uh, how you keep loose is um, you um, paint." areas and colors not lines do you see even on these lily pads do you see that or for instance like for instance if i want to come in here and um shape it i'll come back with the blue to shape the lily pad the you know i'll come back with the blue not the green okay um it's a little bit easier you know and of course i've got some chalk and stuff here but 
I would come back with the blue, maybe make my little cuts, you know. Uh, I don't think so. You don't think we have it? Really? Huh. Okay. Well, I'll find it, show it to you next week. But that's the thing where we did we did a bridge with a with a, with water under it and reflections. And the the reflection because the bridge was arched. Oh, I'll show you here. Can I show you here? So here's the thing. We had this arch bridge like this. Okay. I'm not in the camera. Well, I'm down where I was painting, right? Okay. So the reflection because of the arch did this. Does that make sense? The reflection of this part of the, you know, did that because it's because of this curve. But if you have a tree here, it doesn't follow this. Then you'd think you were a ditch. It has to come straight down, all right? So if you have some stuff here growing on the edge, they're straight down. And then to indicate that that's water, then you got to take something like this, some, some, you know, some lines like this to indicate it's water. And these are the reflections. But what I saw was that because this, the bridge, the bridge um, reflection curved, everybody wanted to curve the tree and everything else. Just one of those things. You don't want to do, you know, just don't want to do it. All right. So now um, Agapanthus, we're going to do it's an ultramarine blue and white and a tiny bit of purple. Okay. And I want to come over here and using just this corner of the angle brush, the 3 8 inch angle brush, I'm going to do little dots here all clustered together and it's agapanthus. I make some few little agapanthuses. Okay, and I'm just gonna kinda go over some of these leaves. This is a cool word. I don't know. What is the pearl of ag it, it, the plural of agapanthus probably is not agapanthuses. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it isn't. It just doesn't sound right, does it? It doesn't sound right, but um, who knows? You know, I don't know. All right. All right, so. we're 577. We have a lot of new people in here, so we have a lot of new questions. How many cookies is this lesson? Two cookies. Two cookies. And the reason it is two cookies is because people have such trouble getting elliptical shapes. There's nothing really particularly all that hard about this picture. So you have just drop. If you, you know, one of the things people have is they can't do these little fine lines because they don't have an angle brush. <laughs> right? All right, let's just put a little one here. Remember... All the flowers, when they get farther back, they're smaller, right? They're farther away, right? Okay, so there's some flowers. Now, let's take some pur pure purple and put a few little dots, make a few little, you know, little dark, darker spots on a couple of them. A little too much right there. Let's take some white. Light's coming from this way, so probably from about uh, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock on these flowers. Um is where the light would be. That's too much paint, so you see me wipe it off the brush. I'm just tapping in a few. This is still wet, so as I tap it in, it isn't quite white anymore. I'm going to say that there's my lighter that's on the flower. Little tiny dots just with the corner. Okay? And then I'll take a little of this paint here, and I'll just, um, just add some of this color into our water like that. That's pretty, right? Just, there it is. Give, give the water a little something, okay? Do you find the grooves in the bottom of your bucket destroy your brush? No. No, I have to say, this is somebody saying, what kind of bucket do you use? This is how, what I use. <laughs> One of these, right? Yeah, just don't okay. tip it over. Yeah, this is what I use, and I like those. But mm -hmm. I have to say, up until the point I found those, which was about five years ago, I'd never bought a paint bucket in my life. I just used a plain, you know recycled something that put what I could put water in but I really like that one okay so now all right so you see where we are here now um, I'm, I'm gonna look and see do I want any put any more colors so I'm gonna wipe off the brush with a little orange now um, maybe uh, these have had a chance to dry so I've got a little water on this now maybe I'll come over here and just a little bit more color on some of these leaves you see that don't have to do much and you could you could probably spend you know, make a big painting. You can spend a long time layering. The trick for doing these water lilies is to, again, is to layer the colors. That is absolutely the trick. So they're not all the same. And um, come back in with your dark, with the dark colors of your water to kind of define them. Okay? That, that's what you can do. Is just come back and paint your water. And if you're doing some sort of reflection, 
you know, come across it with some, long, you know, break up the reflections so they're not just solid colors like that. Okay. So the last little step we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller angle brush, one like this. This is a, what is this one? A one quarter inch. Okay. And what was this one? Three this eighths. one, a three eighths. Yeah. We're going to do this one. We're going to go white. And I'm going to come right here and I'm going to just, just using the edge of this brush, see, I'm just going to tap in this little water lily, flatten out the paint so the paint's flat on both sides. And the, and the little tiny petals that are facing towards you are shorter than those. And we're not doing, you know, this is sort of impressionistic, we're not doing perfect water lilies. We'll make this one a little bigger. This Susan in front. would like to know, does Ginger have a flower garden? How does she know the names of all the plants and flowers? Oh, I don't. Do you know who's the gardener in our family is Cinnamon. Cinnamon is the gardener, though she isn't gardening right now. Cinnamon. Um, we used to have agapanthus in California. I remember that. And, you know, I did write a gardening article for our, uh, our home in Olivenhain in California when I was in my 20s. didn't know the first thing about gardening, but I wanted to get, to get out there in the newspaper. So I would just read something about <laughs> gardening, and then I'd write an article about it and publish it, right? And they'd put it in the newsletter. And everybody thought I knew everything about gardening. I didn't know a thing. I just knew whatever I had researched. This was before the Internet, so it took a little bit. But... Um, you know, it was a way to get to know the neighbors and, oh, I love your gardening article. I'm going, yeah, right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so uh, glad you're liking it. According to Judy, who looked it up on Google, it is an ES. So it is plural with an ES. A Agapanthuses. Yep. Wow. See, I mean, it just it just sounds wrong, doesn't it? So we've got a bigger one here, a little one here. Now we're going to do a small one here out in the water, a little bit smaller, out here in the water. Okay, and we could might, we, we didn't do it on the others, but we could pull down a little reflection on this one. Look at that, because it, it's not sitting on a lily pad. I mean, no two are going to be quite the same. Let's put another little tiny one. We're back over here now. Let's put another little tiny one over here. I'm just using the last few edges of my brush. Here's a teeny one. Okay, and I think I have a teeny tiny one over here. Remember, they get real small as they go back little reflection, and I'm indicating there might be something over here like that, okay? Do you pour the paint, the paint water down the drain? Somebody said it coats your pipes. Well, I don't know. I've done it for 27 years. It hasn't coked, coked anything, coated anything. You know, what, you know what's bad is that you've seen me. I use a lot of tape. I mean, that go down the drain. And that goes down the drain. That really is a problem because <laughs> here's what happens. If you take tape all by itself like this, it's fun, you guys. Don't you love this? You get all this inside. I love questions, right? You get all this inside information. Look, so here's a piece of tape, right? And you've used it to tape something really nifty, and it's still sticky. So you go to put this in the wastebasket, and it's a problem. It takes up the whole wastebasket. It clings to the side or catches stuff like a wastebasket trap. So the trick with tape is you dip it in water. When you're done, you dip it in water, okay? And then it's no longer sticky, and it can go in your trash. But sometimes... You end up just, well, I'll dip, put it in the trash later, and you just put it in one compartment of the water bucket, and then every once in a while, tape accidentally goes down the drain. And then every once in a while, one of these teeny little brushes goes down the drain. This is what clogs pipe, pipes. That's this is what the rotor rooter people are here for. That's clogs pipes. But it has only happened to me a little time. But it's amazing what they can take out of my drains when they're looking. Okay? i got to tell you, I think I'm on a little bit of lighter tip on this one. See, and, and we'd like to know, what makes my canvas become loose, loose after it is painted? Um, it's humidity. It's humidity. Um, you've got to, um, like for instance, um, you've got to spray the back of these with water. Like this is, you, you spray them in, in hot water will do it too. You're shrinking it just like laundry. Um, in, in, in different humidity. Like for instance, some years ago I had a really big show in Las Vegas. which was just really fun. And... Um, I shipped all this artwork there, and a lot of it was just sagging when it got to came from humid Houston to dry lot Nevada, and it was just hanging. And I had to spray the backs of all the canvases to tighten them up. It's very interesting. I think I need to skinny this one up a bit right here. Here, let's take a little thalo green here. I so you can use thalo green and in, 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 in
spraying it. She says it loosens up again after 24 hours. It just keeps drying out. Um, there is a product you can buy that um, will... I've, I've never bought it because I haven't had that problem, but there's a, an actual product you can buy. It's called Spray Tight or something. That It's actually some sort of chemical thing that will keep it tighter. And that's what those little little um, woody things are for, too. Keep it squared up. And yeah, tight. keep it squared up, right? All right, so now we're going to put a little bit of color. This is what the magenta was for. We're going to put a little bit of color in these water lows. First off, we're going to take a little bit of yellow and um, might get the centers like that. Melissa would like to know, is there a light source on this painting? And if so, where is it coming from? Well, what's your first guess when you see that this side of the tree is light and that side's dark? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking it's coming from, I'm going to go with the right. Oh, there you go, right? Can, because everything's going to that. And that's why we did the light side of the flower, flower, flowers like that, okay? Now I'm going to put a little bit of pink on the, some of these water lilies, but you don't have to. You could leave them white. Just, to, just, just barely touch them like that, just a few ones in the front. Give them a little bit of color, just a few little dabs of color. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and look at this. We'll take some moment and chat with you and look at this and add a few. Um, we're going to start, remember, um, um, paint dries darker, right? So maybe now we're going to start, um, you know, adding some lights to some things and adding some darks. Let's, pl let's play with our, I think we need to put some more water lilies out here now. We need a few in here. Now that we've kind of done this, we'll just we'll just make a few more. I saw right. a question go flying by. They want to know if you could put a log out there. Would I put a log out there? Well, we've already got a lot of stuff, so I, I think that say, would make it's it pretty busy. Kind of busy already. You got. It, it, we're trying to keep the center part of this um, um, fairly um, uh, calm, right? I'm going to suggest plants, but I'm, they're, they're less defined. Does that make sense? So we're suggesting water lilies out here more and just just like that. So we want to want to do that as opposed to um, you know actually a lot of detail. But I do want to bring some light here like that from over in here, and I want to take and that's why I love this brush. I want to take some lighter because we're now we're going to start getting some lighter colors. I want to take some lighter um, grasses here and bring that brings your eye back to the center. And if ever you find your brush isn't, um, isn't um, giving you that nice thin line, re-wet it and squeeze it out and reform it, right? Because you don't want to tip it on its side. You want to hold it right on the blade like that. If you have to go slower, that's fine. You know, we want to bring some, um, and let's, let's get a little bit of brighter green going here. Okay, here's our phthalo green. And occasionally you can just not everywhere, but you can add a bit of that, kind of brighten up your picture. And you can come in here, add a bit of the brighter green. Just, you know, not everywhere, but you don't can... Don't go crazy with don't it. Don't go crazy with it, but you can brighten up the picture a little bit, right? And this is what we're talking about. A little bit here, maybe even do some darker ones. Um, here, you don't want any globs of paint. You can thin them out, okay? Um, then let's go back here, and I want to come back up here and do a little bit of darker, tiny bit of darker spots on this tree in a couple places. I can make it a little darker right there because it's lighter. Okay, and same thing over here. Darken up this tree right there. Let's see if I can get my trees a little darker. I would like to know, would this painting be a good candidate for impasto? Do you do any impasto style paintings? I do. We do a lot of impasto, but this would not be one. You would not want this. I wouldn't do this. Well, um, because of the trees and so forth, I guess you could. I guess you could actually do this with a whole, th I guess you could do this whole thing with a palette knife. Now I'm going to come up here and kind of squeeze, you know, make that tree a little skinnier. I like the fact that you can, you know, change what you're doing with your, with your trees, right? You can come back here and you can, um, make something thinner and stuff. If you did this with a palette knife, for instance, you could do this painting with a palette knife. Going to brighten up some stuff up here. Um, here we go. Just a little bit of green. We're just going to play with the greens a little bit. 
maybe put a little green by that water lily. There you go. So the brighter the green, the closer it's going to be to the front. So keep that in mind. And if you've got, you can always come back with acrylics, for instance, if you find that you're, you know, maybe one of the greens, like this green isn't showing up as much, you could come back with a darker line, too. It doesn't all have to be light green. You can do that, too. You can have the darker lines, although I don't know if I like that. Let's do, let's do a gold on that. Just, just yellow oxide, pure yellow oxide on both sides of the brush. Sue's joining okay. late. She'd like to know, how would I dry this when it's mounted? I don't know, how would I mount this when it's dry? Oh, um, we've got a really good video on how to do that um, and how to frame it even. But uh, you can just use uh, glue and foam core. And just, and, and, uh, or the back of the, every package, these are Paramount uh, canvas sheets. And there's 10, they're real pieces of canvas. And they come with a, the, the, every sheet comes with a really hard cardboard thing, and I never throw those out. You can mount them on that too, okay? So, um, We'd like to thank Joanne for the, the, the donation. Thank you, John, for your IT, ITT skills and Ginger for sharing <coughs> your amazing knowledge. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that so much. Do we have any questions on this water lily painting before we get on to the giveaway painting for the day? Well, you still want to do, you need to announce the Facebook one more time because we have a lot more people. You need to announce what the girls have done from the moderators and then... I'll let you do the painting. All right, so here's the deal, you guys. On Facebook, we have a very lovely private club for acrylic artists, and you can, you know, when you join, what what happens is you can put, you can show us your acrylic paintings or either your original stuff based on lessons from my YouTube or from my academy, and you get all kinds of comments and encouragement, and if you put capital CC in your uh, statement there before you post your picture, you, uh, so many of these lovely artists that are members that, you know, are happy to offer suggestions. I think people have found it very helpful. I'll come around occasionally and offer a few myself. So what color was that while I'm talking to you? All right, sorry. <laughs> had to, I'm playing while I'm talking to you, right? So the thing of it is is that we wanted you to know about that, and we have these moderators that are volunteers, six moderators, and they're awesome. And, like, Judy is always putting up deals on, you know, the, the best deal she finds on paint on the Internet. It's all full of information. Wendy's always gi giving you links back to our website. Um, uh, t t Tanya and Michelle are uh, working hard. Uh, uh, Wendy's in, uh, um, well, not Wendy, but um, uh, Mona's in, 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 in Sweden, and she's up different times of the day. Uh, you know, offering comments and helpful suggestions and, you know, also making it possible for people who are, um, you know, seeing us in the middle of the, when we're all asleep, you know, to still look at their artwork. All stuff, stuff's getting posted 24 hours a day there. It's really the best one, best run Facebook thing. And it's really nice, so we invite you to try it. When we get to 4,000, we're going to close it because we don't feel like we can give you the attention you deserve for your artwork we're if we have 10,000 people. We're going to the general public. To the general public. But, our members of the Academy, anytime you're an Academy member, which is gingercooklive.gallery, where we, we have a, not only a Wave and Water Master Class, but regular Academy lessons, all, anytime you're a member of that, you'll automatically be a member of our Facebook club, and you can show off your artwork there. I just wanted to say that. And speaking of our moderators, they very generously donated two $25 Michael uh, gift, gift cards and asked us to pick out two of our scholarship students on our website that we thought John and I thought w could use the extra help for art supplies and give it to them. So let's give them a round of applause. Yay! Yay! That? Yay! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Wasn't that awesome? Best moderators ever. Just, I mean, that's the kind of people we have that, that are moderating the artwork. Just everything's kind, loving, and nice on our site. Um, that's what it is, and, and, and that's who you guys are about, and I know you're going to love it. So I invite you to do that. It's something fun to do. So if, um, you, if you join the Facebook group before we reach 4,000, you will be grandfathered in, meaning you'll always be able to stay there until you quit us. And then, you know, you're out on your own. But, and then, like she said, Academy members will always be accepted as long as they're a current member. Yeah. So what do you think? You know, isn't that cool? I love the idea. Well, we like the idea, too. We like the idea. I mean, it, it takes, I spend a couple hours a day there looking at what people have done and making comments. You know, I try to, and they're doing it too, and then there's all these other students that are doing it too. Everybody's commenting on everybody's stuff, and it's really lovely. And, 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 and besides, you guys inspire us. 
you know, you can't teach a good idea, right? So here's the two pictures side by side. I think we did pretty oh. good, don't you? I just had it side by side. I thought we were done, so now we're going to do it side by side. I got it. No That's problem. Pretty, pretty good, right? There they are. I like the second one better. Okay. You always do the second one better. Well, I think anytime you do something more than once, I mean, you're bound to get it a little bit better, don't you think so? You know, I'm just saying, you know, and you can sit there and fool with it. But I think you get the general idea. Might be pretty this way. What do you think? I saw, I saw a question go by. How big do you think you can get this baby? Oh, I could paint this 30 by 40 and really do a nice job. And then, yeah, then I'd start in with the texture and everything. Sure. Texture and a lot of I, detail. I, I did some water. And we'll probably do, a, she's right, I'd probably do a palette knife and everything and make this a real textured. I, I did some water lily painting some years ago. Um, I was in the hospital for over two months with a ruptured appendix that had, I'd been on a, I was on a cruise and uh, my appendix ruptured on the ship and I didn't get any help um, for a long time and, and when, it, when it, they finally operated on me it had been an hour, you know, over a day. Most people are dead by then, right? And so I was in the hospital for Canada for, an, for a month and then I came down to, back to Houston, I was in the hospital there and operated on a couple of times and the first painting I did when I got out of the hospital was this giant water lily painting. And it really was what I considered a recovery. Sometimes if you're really sick, painting, if you do it like, uh, water lilies are a great recovery painting. I really, if I haven't said that, if you guys, if we, I know we've got a lot of people out there whose health issues are challenging, all right? Try water lily painting. It's a recovery picture. It's a, it, it says rebirth health. I don't know what that is, but it does, at least it does to me. All right, we're going to start with the um, with our new picture. We said we'd start with the painting, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, you took, you uh, took it. I did, I did, I did. Don't I took it. Don't ask me for it. Ah, all right. One <laughs> of the things when we give away um, free, when we give away our original artwork on our show, one of the things I like to do. We started doing this this year was to um, remind you that if we've been on. YouTube for a while. We got some awesome lessons. Have you guys done this lesson? This is a free one on YouTube. Isn't that just great? I love this one with this old kind of village house and the, you know, the road or maybe it's a railroad track or whatever and the, um, you know, tree and everything. I love that. Was that so, an old dead guy? It's an old dead guy, but I didn't tell you in there who it is. I guess I should sometime, but it was <laughs> was inspired by an old dead guy anyway, right? So that being said, um, today we're gonna. What did I do? So I took that that. You just threw it off. Yeah, yeah, but I think I thought I took the canvas I was going to use for that. You, you just had it a second ago. No, I had that. That was that wasn't the canvas. That oh. was the yeah, other one. All okay. right, let's find a. Let's. <coughs> this is what we do. With old canvases. Old canvases. No, it's what we do with the leftover Brand paint. New, uh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> that's what we do with the um the, with our leftover paint, like like this is that we take these canvas sheets and just cover them with paint, and then I can go ahead and paint on them. How cool is that? So I've got some old blue on here. That'll work, all right? So uh, we're going to do this. John's going to start the... We're going to give this away to somebody. You've got to be present to win. You've got to be one of the live um, members that are in our audience. Right now, um, participating. I don't care if you live in Europe or Bangladesh or Canada or wherever. We'll mail it to you, okay? So don't worry about that. Don't say, oh, I'm so far away. She'll never get it to me. We will mail it to you. Promise. So what we do is we start a 10-minute timer. You want 10 on this? You want 12? Give me 12 on this. All right. <coughs> we'll start a 12-minute timer on this one. And the moderators have a link that you will use. And I will turn on the form, which i got to do now, so it can accept your entries. All right. So it's ready to go. So Amazon, give me a 10-minute, 12-minute timer. No, you added them. She, she's so smart. Amazon, stop that timer. 22-minute timer. Amazon, give me a 12-minute timer. 12 minutes, now. All right. So she's off and running with her 12-minute timer. Oh, well, thank you, Jennifer, for your donation. We appreciate that. Um, gals, have you put the link out there? Just feel we're going to do a random drawing, and uh, we'll let people you know enter. Do we have? I can answer questions while I'm talking, talk and answer, chew gum and answer questions. Anybody got any? Uh, not yet. Oh, the magic word is what is the magic word? What are you painting? Snow. 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 Thank you. 
snow, 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 let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Ginger, can you do another water lily tutorial? Well, not tonight. Um, we've got one on YouTube, but yes, and we've got some on our website too. But I think if you if you rewatch this and see what I said about the shape, right? The shape, that's where it, everybody falls short of, of the shape. And this is if you can just get the shape, you'll be in uh, good shape. <laughs> <laughs> I see how you did that. Magic <laughs> word is snow. It's snow, magic word is snow. Magic word is snow. The link is working because entries are coming in. If you can't go for that hot link, if you go to gingercooklive.gallery and then in the address bar, do a slash giveaway. It will take you to the form. Gingercooklive.gallery slash giveaway. Yeah. We're bringing it down to its knees. We're bringing them down to its knees. Service what, the, the servers? Yeah, it says link's not working, service unavailable. <coughs> We're getting entry, so some, some people are getting through. <coughs> if you're getting an error, try it again. Try again. We will, we will give you guys some time, more than the 10 minutes, and if it's, there's yeah, a we'll problem. Give we'll 12. give you some time. So that's not fair. You know, We want to make sure that this is fair. We're trying to be fair. You know what I mean? We're trying to be... I mean, we took it off, off of our servers server and put it over onto theirs, Google's. Yeah, because we figure they can handle all the, the rush, right? Yeah. I was just telling John that um, one of my favorite artists, he's now passed away, is Howard Behrens, B-E-H-E-R-E-N-S. So people always ask, who's one of your favorite influences? But it was always Howard Behrens. And um, I always loved, loved him. And... Um, he just uh, painted things that I, I, I just really like. And, um, in, in fact, I um, own one of his paintings. And um, in fact, it, how, how I got it was I, um, I was at an arch. I was in Philadelphia. And, well, you know, as an artist, one of your tricks is if you want to write off your trip, you go visit art galleries. It doesn't matter if they talk to you or not. You get their card and you were there, right? Okay, so, um, so I went into this art gallery and... Um, was talking to him. It was a pretty swanky place. And I noticed that they had a Howard Barron's on the wall. And um, I said, wow, that is so cool. And uh, because his, his stuff um, at the time was, um, you know, just wildly expensive. And, um, and I remember, and, they, and what this company did that um, had this kind of a neat story. What this company did was they... Um, uh, took artwork, estate artwork. They, they, they bought artwork. You know, people died. They'd buy the artwork from estates. From, um, and then they'd, um, they'd turn around and resell it. You know what I mean? But somebody died, and they'd, they'd buy this whole collection of stuff. And they had somehow gotten that piece of Howard Barron's because somebody had died that owned that and a bunch of other art that they'd purchased, okay? So um, anyway, that's how... Um, they got it, and at, at the time, and I and I saw. I remember saying, "Well, how much is it?" And I think they said it was um, five thousand dollars. And I'm going, "Is it real?" And of course, I really offended them. Then I can't tell you how uh, these people were really big deals. And I say that remark just practically made enemies. But the um, oh uh, oh yeah, it's real. And, and 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 at the time, my daughter Cinnamon says, "Oh my God, Mom, you should buy that piece." Um, you know, I know how much you like Howard Barron's. And listen, this is a guy whose artwork was, was running around 50 grand, okay? A p painting, okay? So naturally, I want to know if it's a fake for five grand, right? And then I'm thinking they can't be that dumb as to not know what it's worth, right? <laughs> Just <laughs> if it's one of his, right? And um, so anyway, the, the upshot of it was is that uh, the other owner, they were partners, came in and we got to talk and, and just... You know, we kind of dropped the Howard Barron's thing. And after I, you know, implied it was fake and, you know, their integrity and so forth, I would just drop that. And but I did like it. I kept looking at it. And I said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm an artist. And, oh, that's so cool. What do you paint? And, you know, naturally, I've got a portfolio around, right? 
and um, you know we got to talk about the barons and he said um, um, he says oh no that really is a um, that really is a a Howard Barons a painting gosh it's just lovely right and um, so we got to talking about it and um, he traded me uh, two of my paintings for it which I thought was pretty cool right really. And then later I did a bunch of then I did a bunch of work for them for for a while. I think I gave them like I gave them some cash, which I think I gave them like fifteen hundred dollars, and only on the and then two of my paintings, and um, and the and, and I said what I wanted was a certificate of authenticity from Judy Barons, you know, who was then Howard's wife, still you know she's his widow now, um, you know, saying that was the real de that, that was the real painting, okay, and. Um, so the, um, uh, uh, she, she, they had the letter. They, they wrote her, got the letter of authenticity, sent her, the, I guess, the photograph of it, and got the le letter of authenticity. Howard was alive, and it was, was his painting. And I ended up, you know, that's how I ended up with it, this painting. And, I'd like and to thank, uh, you, you finish there, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, question. Thank uh, Emily for the donation. Thank you, Ginger and John. For all that you do, we love you both. Oh, well, we appreciate that very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All Jerry right, no. Get the link, try my link. Oh, uh, who's having a sale? Somebody's having a sale. Jerry's is having a big um, ruby satin silver sale, and Eric wants to know what size brushes should he get. You got to get quarter inch, three inch, three eighths inch, and and. Um, you got three quarter. You have them all. I got all you the have sizes. All five of them. I have all five sizes, but I use the most quarter inch, three eighths inch, and half inch. But right? you gotta realize, remember how big he gets. I think he should get some of the bigger ones too. Um, well, they they don't go any bigger than that, John. What three quarters? Well, the big the big one I don't use as much, but they do make a. Well, you don't use the, the the but the the art sherpa, you know, my daughter uh, I keep talking to her like third person, the art sherpa. <laughs> she um, she um, did um. She got the silver people to make a long-handled ruby satin, uh, not ruby satin, but uh, um, bright brush. And do I have, uh, not angle brush, uh, it'll come to me. Do I have it here, sitting here somewhere? I've got one, a long-handled, I can't stop, I have to show you. There is, they make that one too, the, for bigger paintings, the long-handled one, but I really like this. I didn't say cancel, I said show it, you silly girl. Did she cancel it? Yeah. She was asleep when I was talking to her. Well, that's all right. Just let's just chatter now, and yeah, we finish the fine. painting, and it's just no rush, right? You guys can see we're knocking it out fairly quickly, right? Okay. So, so far, so good, right? So far, so good. So far, we've gotten 290 entries, so I know somebody's okay, so out there. Okay, so you should keep trying. If you're not getting it, keep trying, because we don't, we know. If you're not, we'll, like I say, we'll give you some time to, to get in. You do not have to be a member of the Academy. Of no, anything. just anybody's watching. You have to be live. That's the only caveat. You've yeah. got to be, well, alive. <laughs> alive would help, but you've got to be part of the live audience. You know, you can't be watching this in two weeks and say, well, I didn't enter. What happened to the entry? There's no entry in two weeks, friends. No, okay. the entries there's are turned no off. No entry in two weeks, right? But that's okay. That's, that's all right. Yeah. We're all are welcome to enter. Yeah, everybody is welcome to enter. And, uh, you know, we want you to, let's see, let's see, what do we got here? John, who was the artist who painted the pile of books? Uh, Har Harnett. Harnett. Uh, Harnett. Uh, William Marina, Harnett. I, I, William I answered Harnett. you on the, um, form, oh. the page for that. You should have got an email saying that it was been answered. Uh, William Harnett, yeah. Oh, Bill. Uh, and, 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 and he was really uh, just awesome. And it's interesting because I watched what he, he was famous for. Not those books, which I love, right? He apparently was famous for. He's got this one painting of this dead duck that's hanging on a wall for hunting and a hunting horn and stuff. And 
I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> just, no, nah, no, no, right? I just um, don't, don't, don't think so. Don't want to, don't want to do that. Don't want the old duck, you know. Uh, don't don't think we want to paint an old dead duck. Carmen, we'd like to thank you for the donation. Greatly appreciated that. You can only enter one time. If your name is there twice, I'll delete it. One entry per person, please. Yeah, that's, we didn't mention that, but that's real important. I probably need to put that on the form. Yeah, one entry per person. Otherwise, people are just enthusiastic, John. Yes. you gotta, you got to go for the enthusiasm, right? Is the linen paper worth the extra cost over these cotton sheets? Yes. <laughs> okay, do you want to think about it before you answer? Or just, well, the, just the linen, it's only like a buck more. I mean, you know, and it is really nice. Linen, it's very anytime smooth. you can paint on linen, gosh, linen's just great. And I'll tell you what, if you guys are selling, this came up today. I think this is an important conversation. This came up today, and, um, and I'm glad it did. Um, uh, what, well, I'm sorry about the student that wrote me. She wrote me and she said that she'd done an art show over the a weekend. She had over 50 paintings in it and nothing sold, and she was devastated. And she was really counting on the sale of those paintings for, um, um, you know, stuff to happen, you know, in her life as far as financial prosperity goes. She needed the sale of those paintings. Now, the problem with that is that in a one-day art show... It's real tough sometimes to um, to sell stuff. I mean, I'm just saying it can be um, uh, very, very tricky to because people like a couple days to think about it. Art's a big deal. You know, if you're an artist, you know, we paint all the time. It's not that big a deal to us. But for a lot of people, it is a big decision. You know, I change my art all the time. But there are people that are stuck with They buy a painting. That's it. That's the painting for the next thousand years that they've got at their house, right? So you, when you think about it from their standpoint, it's a very big deal. And they want um, to really think about it. And basically, husbands and wives buy art together. That's one of the things. And the best place to sell art here's the secret you didn't know, is in tourist locations. When they're on vacation, the men are much more agreeable to spending money when they're on vacation. You can talk them into anything on vacation. A little tougher when they're home, okay? <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. So um, this is why. I mean, they know that. Uh, uh, you know, Royal Caribbean knows that. It, you know, you look at... Uh, um, um, you know, they, at, at Port of Call, they've got all this weird stuff for sale that, um, you know, you could buy home, but they figure you're much more likely. A, a good example of that was bamboo sheets. The sheets are actually made in Utah, but they sell them in the Caribbean because they're expensive, and they figure there's a much more chance of you guys buying sheets when you're on vacation than you are at the local department store. And women really, if they're couples, generally agree on art together. So if you're trying to sell something, um, A, um, if you can be in a tourist area, it's very hard for a two-day sale. And there's a price point in which most women, and I say this, it, it may have changed because I'm older now. So, But generally, everybody's got a budget where they don't have to talk to the other person to spend the money. Whatever that is, right? Generally, people that can afford paintings, it's probably a thousand bucks. Might be a little more now, but probably anything under a thousand dollars, the wife may be able to get away with buying and not talk. But if it's over a thousand, chances are she has to have the other person. Well, she may have gone to the art show. He's not there. He's not aware. So she might want the painting, but have no way to, um, you know, ha ha no way to buy it. And then she, you know, and you're gone, right? We're just going to put a little snowman here. What do you think? Is that I fun? That's a good idea. So uh, anyway, I mean, they may, uh, you, you don't know. Um, you, you, you don't know where, um, 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 you don't know where the, um, uh, 
um, the person's budget is, so they don't know how to find you. So anyway, that is my um, best advice is to try to, if you're going to do an art show, try to have one that's longer than a day. Try to keep the prices where whatever the budget is in your, your neck of the woods, where you think that um, a single person in the house, you know, a single member of the household can make the choice without bringing the other person around to confirm it. That's, that's or concentrate on the couples when you're selling. <laughs> do, right. do items sell better if they're framed? Um, no. Uh, you're better off to do gallery wrap and um, then uh, do a frame piece. You're better off to do to gallery wrap. And the reason I say that is because um, the people, a lot of times, your frame will kill a sale. Because it's the wrong frame for the house. Because it's the wrong frame for the house or it's chipped or they want to deal in. Um, and the galleries don't like it if you frame because um, they sell frames and if it's not one of their frames, they don't want it. Um, really, there's no upside for you to, to do a frame that I can see, right? Are those but, people walking by that have snow covered on them? Who? This? Yeah, what, what, what is that? What are you talking about? What is that? That's a stump. Oh, that's a stump. What are you talking about? Are you stumped? Well, uh, yeah, I was stumped on that one. You're stumped. That's a twit. Well, that's see, a that's stump. what I needed. There's stuff. So I was so going to put a snowman, but I lied. I'm not going to put oh, him in. Oh, I like the snowman. Well, I know you did, but he's gone. Yeah. Sorry. You know. You got to be quick around here. Got to be quick. Or there's there is no snowman, right? No. You got to be quick, or there's no snowman, no right? No snowman. So anyway, there's our um, that's our little house. I don't know. Maybe I'll do another little something here. I got a little twig here. There's our little stuff. I was going to do a fence. I I started off doing a fence. I sort of ran out of paint. It's kind of fun though. I was going to put a little post or something here. Um, but no, we won't. We've just got these little bit of twigs coming up like this. See, don't you love these little angle brushes? Well, we know you do. Yeah, I do, because you can do all this stuff with them. It would be nice if they'd give them to us. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? But that, obviously no one's doing that, so here we go. Okay, that's it, John. Who's won our picture? <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Well, I'm done. It's over. Let's go. That's right. Do you think we've given people enough time to... Um, well, I don't know. Some people are still struggling. Are they? Well, All right, we're guys, we're going to be shutting it down, so try to get in there, like, in the next two seconds. Yeah, I'm going to just Which is gonna be darken up the sky here. You want to have some icicles hanging from your from your roof? Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. That's fun. We'll talk while we're talking. Let's just do I'll keep painting while we're talking. The snowman melted. Yeah, it melted right before my eyes. <laughs> before it was even built. He didn't get his hat on. You could put a little top hat down there in the snow. Oh, that'd be good, right? Just yeah. a little... But it still looked like a pile just still sitting there, the way he melted uh, it down. Yeah. Well, that's true. It, it still would, right? Can't believe you did that. You can't believe I did, did what, right? Hey, can you recommend a canvas brand? Oh, well, you know, Frederick's is a very good brand of canvas if you can buy it. They're always, but it depends on... Look, they have grades of canvas. They have grades. Um, oh, and I started to say that about... Um, going to make this a... What are you doing? Well, I'm just fooling with this now because <laughs> we have time. I was going to put... Um, uh, um, um, never mind. I'm taking it out. Where's my yellow wax? I just ran out of paint here is what's happened. All I can do is apologize for the links, guys. I don't know why it's not working. Um, 330 people did get through with it. They did? 330? Yeah. All right. Let me just... I'm just redoing this right here because I don't like it. I just, I, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. It's a Google form. It's on a Google server. It should be accessible by the world. Well, well you'd think, wouldn't you, wouldn't you? Well, that's why we went to that instead of our website. Well, we brought our website to the knee. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry that that happened. Uh, any, th any thoughts on the future of how we might do this, John, so that people don't? I guess we're going to have to give them up. What? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, sometimes you just have to, you know, just every once in a while you gotta rethink it. Rethink it. There you go. Just needed a look. Just sometimes you just gotta tweak something. You know what I mean? You never know, but you just do. Gotta gotta tweak something. And um, somebody's saying that the stumps look like the coyotes. You know the coyotes you always see in the southwestern. Oh, you think so? 
Well, no, I don't think so. Um, Judy does. Judy, Judy Smith thinks does. it looks like the Wiley Coyote yeah. things. Oh, I see why it does because of the tail. It does kind of, doesn't it? Yeah. It could look, yeah, it could, yeah, it does kind of look like that. You're right. It does kind of look like that. Well, yeah, see? Uh, well, why don't we call this Coyote Gulch? <laughs> Perfect. Coyote Gulch. What do you think, you guys? Coyote Gulch. A little cabin in the mountains. Um, it's cute. It's cute, right? Um, so I started to, I was talking about something, and I forgot what it was now. We got. I find it so hard to believe. <laughs> So many things with you, I just cannot believe. <laughs> I know. Just every day, it's just, it's a, it's a new day, isn't it? Every day, it's such a surprise, you know, going, wow. What, for those what people that here? it did not work for, can you, did you get an error message, or what did you get? I have to have something. What did you use? What kind of device are you on, and did you get an error message? We tested it on a bunch of stuff. I guess we didn't test it on everything. And what device are yeah, what are you trying to do? Are you doing it on a phone? Are you doing it on a laptop? What what are we doing here? Yeah. All right. Looks like we've done collecting entries. We're gonna close the form. You're all done over there? I'm done. I'll sign it. All right. This was fun, you guys. I hope you like it. No longer accepting entries. All over for entries. Don't forget, if you like this type of painting, this is a lesson on YouTube. Go find this. Go paint this. This is really fun. Put it. Good thing to do. Good, good thing to know. Okay. One through 100, uh, 340. <coughs> How much? 340. One through 340? Yep. I've got a PC. PC didn't work. Uh, i got to be your PC on that one. My te my template my tablet's a junk. Okay, that's probably, probably answer that. <coughs> I've several minutes. We finally got in. I'm on my desktop. Service unavailable. The Nexus Five worked all right. iPad wouldn't take the link. I love my this contest pens, painting. Right? What's that? She's thrown down to Mama. Okay. Do um, you want my lady friend to pick it, or you want to pick a number? I'm going to pick it. You're going to pick it? Yeah, I never like how they do it, right? You don't like how... What? Excuse it, it, me? It's between... Give me that again. It's between one and three... Four, zero. Four, zero, right? Yeah. What I'm are you gonna, feeling? I'm feeling a 305. You're feeling a 305. Well, let's see if Anthony Thomas likes a 305. Now, let's see if I can spell this out. His last name I will not even begin to spell. And, John, I've got a surprise. We have two of these ones right here with the, with the winner scene, and someone's going to win one of these. What? Yep. You doing a two for I'm on I'm going to do for two for and this is a you know you know a two for on Monday. Someone's going to I'm going to pick another number too. So Anthony at 305 one. He's got the um, 10 minute painting. Okay. You got the 10 minute painting. And um, number 13 has got the number 13. 13 has got the original Ginger Cook lesson painting. Joyce Mooney. Joyce Mooney, congratulations. Number Joyce 13, it's your lucky number today. Original okay. So that's, the, this is Joyce. Painting. All right. And jo Joyce got that. It's got the original. So Anthony and Joyce, you need to uh, let me know you're out there. Yeah, tell us right away or we've got to pick somebody else. Because you've got to be live to be present. You have to be live <laughs> to be present. <laughs> Well, that is the preferred method of doing it. I'm thinking it probably is. I'm, I'm trying to think of the zombies are welcome, but apparently not. No zombies. No zombies. zombies. You have okay, to be live let me, to be present. Let me say this again. You have to be live to be present. No, no, no. I, no, no. I can't argue with that. You are absolutely right. You've got to be live to be present. And in order to win, 
you've got to be online now to tell us you were there during the contest. You've got to be online during the contest. You kind of entered it. Anthony and, just and Joyce, I need to hear from you. Okay, well, hear from us, or we're going to draw somebody you. else. Hear from us, you guys. If you're Joyce, here, I'm here. I'm here. Yahoo. Yeah, Joyce is here. All right, Joyce, you won this original ginger Anthony, cook. I've not heard from you yet. Anthony, we haven't heard from you. Because I have no idea what your screen name is going to be. Joyce is here. Yeah, I saw Joyce. Joyce is good. Chat doesn't work. Anthony Thomas here. Oh, well, he has a funny name. Okay, gotcha. Both are here. All right, congratulations, you guys. Use our contact us on our website to give me your um, mailing address, please. All right, we're going to send, send each of these out to you. How you cool got is that? Who's? Yeah, this is Anthony's and this is Joyce's. Okay. I'm going to write a just a then chalk oh, on you're the back. Oh, write them on the back. Just, um, a I'll J, just do a just J. Just do a J and an A. J and A. A. Okay, so there you go, you guys. I hope that was. Um, Hey, we certainly hope you had fun this evening and learned a few things. Everybody now knows, and re, re, you know, everybody now knows about ovals and what, look, water lilies being smaller as you get back. So we're not going to see any water lilies <laughs> like this on your picture. No and then more Pac-Mans or butts. It looks like they have a butt there. No, no, you're not. We're not going to see that anymore, right? No, 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 no. no. So uh, here was our picture for the night, which was really uh, great fun. It was a good um, picture. Uh, here's our picture. This is the one we did tonight. Yeah. Yes. And um, I will sign that. I think these are just. I think these are what I think are very healing paintings. I think the water lilies. I think about that sort of rebirth painting. So um, if you enjoyed this, um, I hope you did. Uh, I hope you try to paint it, and don't let this. Don't get fear in the way. We now know a little bit more about how to use salo green and not have it look too. Uh, you know, too bright, and about how to take advantage just look of it. Look how many greens she got out of that one little tube of green. It's kind of cool, right? That's the magic. That's the magic of the Queen of Color. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next Sunday, so at two um, thirty p.m. Central. Two thirty p.m. Central time. If and, you like um, the show, remember to subscribe and share it with your friends. If you didn't like the show, please don't ever come again. <laughs> <laughs> and don't tell anybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it very much. And there's great love here for you. There is indeed. We will educate, entertain, and amaze. Good night, Ginger. Night, John. Night, Sammy. And good night for Ginger Cook Live. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.